control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 17 seconds and count. 15, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, start. Power down when uh, on time, and uh, if you can check the empty. What do the International Space Station and this flexible scope have in common? They required precision machine parts by IMS to get the job done. Tolerance requirements for the medical industry are less than those of the aerospace industry, yet extremely stringent nonetheless. Some tolerances are so tight, and some parts so tiny, in fact, that if we miss the tolerance, the part disappears. Restoring your medical devices to relevant engineering standards requires three ingredients. The right processes, the right parts, and the right people. But the journey doesn't begin here. It begins 920 miles south at the IMS R&D lab in Fort Lauderdale, where a dedicated engineering team works hard to ensure the devices are ready for your team. To be able to service modern medical devices correctly, we need a nimble, dynamic, and modern engineering department. We at IMS have an engineering department that has two major branches. One of them is research and development, R&D, and the other one is life cycle engineering that deals with operations. We get our hand on a brand new instrument and we measure it on this endo bench where we can take all the key parameters like field of view, direction of view, diopter settings, illumination, illumination distribution. We get information about contrast, resolution and all these data are collected in the computer and the final printout is for us a guideline how good the endoscope has to be when we return it to our customers. The next step is we take it apart, we lay it out, take out all the components and take basic measurements for diameter, thickness, but we also need to take more optic specific parameters. On the autocollimator, we measure optic-specific parameters like the radius of lenses. We can also measure focal lengths, back focal lengths. We have special filters for different wavelengths. And we have special illumination for infrared and UV. We put all the data in an optical design program and do a virtual prototyping. And we go out and buy these components mostly from companies in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, because there are only a few companies specialized on micro-optics for endoscopes. I want to talk to you about a very important engineering principle that describes why IMS approaches repair so much differently than the rest of the third-party repair market. And this principle is called tolerancing. Tolerancing has to do with the fact that every manufacturing process has some variance associated with it. So from one part to the next and one assembly to the next is a little bit different in size and shape from the part before it. So this is the transmission shaft for a popular console-driven power driver. And when the engineers decide that this component needs to be replaced, we have to look at and understand the size, shape, and tolerance for this component to be sure that it fits every time inside of a repair device. In order to do that, we need to understand not just the size, shape, and tolerance of this one component, but also the size, shape, and tolerance of all the parts that it interacts with. This drill was actually repaired by another third party and their goal was to just get it rotating and ship it back out to the hospital. If you look under the hood, they actually take away the spacing that's supposed to assist the controller by keeping it cool. There's some other key components that aligns 
the gearbox with the motor, they eliminate that as well just to get this to fit. This is a 4200 that was serviced by IMS. Now the difference between this and the other third party is that if you look here, you'll see an air gap. The controller operates at a certain temperature. With this air gap, it keeps it within that range. These are the two of the most common third party controllers. This is an electronic company online. This is that same controller that was in that 4200. And this is actually a company from Canada who will buy RC toy cars. They'll take the circuitry out of the toy cars and put them in this can. The point of that is pretty much get the drill rotating, ship that back out to you. They don't care about trigger travel or a certain feel that the surgeon is accustomed to. Whenever we have the experienced team that we have here, everybody can look through the scope and tell me the image is good or bad. Me, on the other hand, I have problems with judging the quality of the image without having any tools or numbers for it. So what this tool does, it allows to uh, evaluate the image quality during the assembly. So what are we doing here? <clears throat> when we have a scope, the most important part of it is this front negative lens. And the alignment of it is actually very, very crucial for the performance of the whole scope. And while this is being done, this basically allows the technician and whoever is doing this procedure to see the image quality being evaluated constantly. Oh, this is like a perfect image right now. Every day that we strive to make patients safer, new scientific and technological breakthroughs challenge us. As the bar rises, we rise to exceed it. But in the end, it's the age-old battle.